Hey, this is Drew. Welcome back to Beyond Seclusion. Welcome if this is your first time joining. Uh, if you follow the channel, you know one of my favorite calibers guns is a 22 long rifle. Reason being is it's just cheap to shoot. Uh, literally pennies. Uh, when you find a great deal, you know, the Federal had their black pack here last year in the fall, and you could get it for two cents a round. I mean, you can shoot all day. Yeah. I've always wanted to have a bolt action. Bolt action just because lack of moving parts, reliability, and just, you know, hey, I mean, have another 22. I've only ever really had my Ruger 1022. So I got my hands on Ruger's Precision Rim Fire, and, you know, they had a special I saw on this, and I got a hold of one to review on, and I'm really excited. It's a pretty cool looking gun. Now this is it right out of the box and it's fully adjustable. So we've got the stock that adjusts, the cheek rest. We even have an adjustable trigger that comes with it. The barrel's free floated. It comes threaded. And the other thing that's really cool is it accepts the Ruger 1022 mag. So if you're like me or a lot of people and you've got a 1022 but you want a bolt action, um, this like is awesome. Okay. The trigger, and we'll test, we'll, we'll go over all this stuff individually. The trigger is supposed to go from two and a quarter up to, I think, six pounds, and it's adjustable. What am I going to put on this? I'm going to put on probably one of my favorite scopes. Now, I think I, I may do a separate review on this the Nikon Rimfire. Now, this one specifically is the four to 12. Reason being, if you're going to shoot aspirin size, targets, dime sized targets at 50 yards, you need that 12 power. Okay. Nine power is just not going to do it. You know, there's not a ton of dedicated rim fire scopes out there. I personally think that Nikon and from doing a little research and stuff on pretty much everybody's list, they're on the top five. And when you look at cost, it's hard to beat. So anyway, we're going to put a Nikon on there. And then as far as our mounts, I'm gonna just go with some Vortex. I was looking for the cheapest quality mounts that I could find. The only other real contender was UTG. And, um, I never got any kind of response after several things. And for $10 more, I could get the Vortex, which has a lot better reputation. And so, yeah, I went to ten, added 10 bucks and I went with a Vortex over UTG. Okay. If Let's just start and, and work our way forward. The first is the adjustable stock. You've got a little, quick release here and then this can move up and down and this can move forwards and back you get it right where you want it and then you simply flick the switch up you've got a little knob here that you can adjust the tension pretty straightforward okay we have an adjustable trigger and there's kind of like a secret compartment back here if you see this here and then this comes up a little secret compartment holds our Allen wrench for adjusting the trigger pull, which is kind of nice because it's always there and you don't have to, you know, make sure to bring something along. It is kind of difficult. There's like a finger groove here, but I have found, and I even have small hands that I can't grab that out. So I just take a little screwdriver here and our little Allen wrench comes with it. Now, the place to adjust that is on the bottom side. Right down in there is where this goes and we can adjust it. Straight out of the box, not touching it, let's see what our trigger pull is. About three pounds. There's our adjustment screw for the trigger pounds. Clockwise increases it. Let's see if we can go counterclockwise and if we can decrease that. Let's do one full turn. Just under three. There are about two and a half. There's about two and a half. That's kind of where I want it. I'm not going to crank it all the way up to see how high we can go. So that's how simple it is.
to adjust the trigger pull counterclockwise, lighter pull down clockwise, increases trigger pull. We take our little Allen wrench, we stick it back in our little secret compartment there. The next thing is the bolt pull length. Right now it's at a 22. And when you pull on this, you're gonna notice it's not, it's not like a, you know, an 1800 Mauser or something that's just super smooth. It's not bad. It only goes back this far. To pull the bolt out, we've got the bolt release lever here. We just push this down and the bolt slides out. So I push that down and bolt slides out. On the bolt, we have a couple of clips. Okay, clip and a clip. If we take this clip off, it's going to alter our pull on the bolt. This little clip here, you're gonna need something like a flathead screwdriver. We're just gonna take that off. If I can get it off there. And it comes off. Let's put this back in. So we took the little clip off. The bolt now looks like this. What it's gonna do is it's gonna give it a long stroke. You wanna put this somewhere safe so that you don't lose it in case you change your mind. And we just slide the bolt back in. And press that button. Slide the bolt forward. And now what we're gonna have is we're gonna have an action that's very similar to the higher caliber precision rifles and we get to pull it all the way back. Purpose of this is for using this to practice because I can shoot this all day and it's set up so similar, I'm gonna get some of the muscle memory planking with this versus shooting 308 or, or one of the other calibers. It's gonna cost me a lot more to spend a day at the range. Okay, and then our trigger pull that is that is short, that is crisp, that is a really, really nice trigger. Barrels free floated. We have our thread cap, so we're ready to go with a can. It's a part. Unlike the Ruger 1022 that's going to get a lot of buildup in the action where you have to take it apart and clean it, that's one of the nice things with a bolt is we don't have all those moving parts. It's not reciprocating. We're not going to get that buildup in the mechanisms, in the trigger group and stuff like we do with the 1022. Pistol grip is going to be basically a standard AR-15, same setup. The safety switch is also going to be very similar. Comes with a 15-shot mag, just like with the Ruger 1022. Goes in nice and easy. It will hang down quite a bit. <laughs> it hangs down a lot for that five extra shots. The release is easy. Up under there, falls out. Here's the 10 shot. When we do the 10 shot, it clicks in and then it's just completely flush and it falls out effortlessly. Real quick, because I have a tendency to forget stuff when I'm busy filming things. I've been outside, I got it zeroed. It didn't take much to zero. I don't know why I've got that Nikon scope and it was shooting um, way high and right when I got it on, but I've got vortex Mounts love them. Okay. These things are solid I don't know how if you can see that but none of these little Dinky screws you got a nice beefy screw. I love it. I love these vortex mounts They were ten dollars more then the UTG, I think these things are solid. Love them. Okay, couple things. One is the bolt pull. Okay, I showed you that thing where we can take that out and we can get a full pull to sort of mimic uh, using the precision rifle for like 308 or 223. One thing that I found that I don't like, and I'm going to put back in that clip, is when we look down in here, We've got quite a bit of extra room that I can stick my finger down in there. If you're bagging it or you happen to the shell doesn't toss out. Okay, and 22 is kind of known for that. You know, when I'm shooting 308 or something, they usually come out with some force. The 22 usually doesn't. So you got two options. You can either pull it back to make sure it goes out, 
But if it hits a bag, I found that it falls down in there and stays down in there. And I don't like that because then I got to take the mag out to get it to drop out. And so I'm going to put it back in. So I went ahead and put my clip back on because I don't want stuff falling down in there. That was a pain in the butt and I didn't care for that. So we're going to put this back in. So now I got a short pull. Bolt stays here. It's not going to give me that feel of the full action, but I'm, that's not why I'm shooting this. And then I'm not going to have the shell getting caught down in there. The other thing so far that I've encountered that, that I really don't like is the Picatinny rail is a 30 MOA cant, lean forward, and I don't like that. I'm not sure, really not quite sure the purpose of that. This is a rimfire scope, and basically I've got it doped all the way down with just steadro, or, uh, standard federal 38 grain hollow point copper plated, and I am down as far as it will go because of that 30 MOA can't. I now, will say guys, when you shoot subsonic on this, it is the stupidest quiet I have ever heard in my life. You can't hear anything. The only thing that you hear when you shoot subsonic is this. Listen very carefully. That's it. That's the only sound you hear. And it's even muffled because you got a shell in there and it's coming forward and it's hitting that brass and that's even a softer sound. Uh, I'll show you. It's, it's crazy stupid. It's quieter than any air rifle or airsoft gun I've ever heard. It's quieter than the Ruger 1022 because I got nothing moving. I, it is stupid. Okay, I'm outside. Happy Father's Day. What a great way to spend Father's Day. My wife's working. Uh, the kids just got up. We had a busy weekend, so everybody's just kind of chilling today. Perfect day. It's beautiful outside. It's not hot, not too much wind. Anyway, kind of doing the review here on this Ruger Precision 22 long rifle. I've got it sighted in. Ran into a couple corks. I'll go over those. So what I want to do now is I want to find the ammo that I want to sight this scope in. I want to find the most accurate subsonic because that's really was sort of my purpose for getting this rifle was to put the can on it and the subsonic and as you're going to see it is just crazy stupid quiet. I mean it is it is ridiculous. So I've got some different ones. I've tried the the federal bulk ammo that I use the 38 grain with this scope the Nikon, which is my favorite, I've got it doped all the way down. Um, the 30 MOA forward cant on this um, is not working real good with this scope. Shooting the heavier stuff, I think it'll be fine. But if I was shooting like CCI Stingers, I can't dope this down low enough. But that's okay. It's going to work for me. So right now I got the CCI Suppressor. Um, the 970 feet per second. Let's see what kind of groups we get with this. I really like that trigger. This is so quiet. It's just, it's, it's ridiculous. Really happy with those groups. Seems like it could have just a little smoother feed ramp there. Next one I'm using is my favorite, um, I guess, hunting round. It's the 32 grain segmented hollow point going at 1640 feet per second. This is not going to be subsonic. Should take a quick look here. This is what I zeroed on. This was initially the zero that's actually a pretty decent group uh at 50 yards considering that's just kind of range ammo the next one was the american suppressed and that was an absolutely awful terrible group it was quiet but terrible terrible group 
Next one was the CCI suppressed 45 grain. That's a tight group. That's a really tight group, considering that's not match grade ammo. Okay, now I'm using my CCI subsonic. The 40 grain in this is going at 1050 feet per second. That's gonna be, if we're shooting subsonic, we wanna maximize speed and yet stay below the sound barrier. So I think this is as close as we can get. I just shot one. And again, it's just that crazy, stupid quiet. That's just crazy, stupid. I'd probably put them all in one hole if it wasn't for my heartbeat. Nice groups. See, and that's one of the things is you got to really pull that back so that they come out. We're not hitting the bag. Gosh, that's quiet. BB gun, any BB gun, airsoft is louder than that. Nice group. If you've not watched my video on the world's most, most lethal 22 long rifle round, this is it. It's the segmented mini mag. It's a 40 grain going at 1235. Let's see if it's, it's not gonna be subsonic, but let's see what kind of groups we get. Okay, so I got it all sighted in. I'm done outside as far as zeroing. What we zeroed it at is we used the 40 grain subsonic, and this is the group we got. That's impressive, considering that this isn't match ammo. It's affordable, a lot more affordable than match ammo. It's easily found, easy to get, and we're subsonic, and we got good accuracy. Then we've got, if we want to stay subsonic, with a hunting round or more lethal, although that does have a great expanding hollow point. Check out the review I did on that. It expands really well, even at low velocities out of a short barrel. But then we got the segmented subsonic and we got a really decent group with that. We had a couple that were up here a little bit higher, but very happy with that. Then we doped the scope, five down, one left. And what I did was, is I made a little cheat sheet. I just type up a little thing here, okay? And then I can stick that under the plastic piece where the wrench is for the trigger. And so anytime I wanna dope the scope, here it is, just in case I forget. So the zero, zeroed with those two, then I dope it, five down, one to the left, and then this is what I get with Federal Bulk. I got that for two cents a round, and that's pretty respectable for going outside and just plinking and having fun and shooting cheap, not subsonic. Then I want to go with the ultimate hunting round. I want to use something for hunting. I want to shoot, you know, varmint or rabbit hunting, squirrel hunting, whatever. Then I go with the most lethal. Check out that video. That is the CCI Mini Mag segmenting. Incredibly powerful round for a 22. Same dope as the Federal. And that is a very respectable group. We've got the BDC, but we also have the target turrets. So right now, as you can see, I'm dialed in for the federal. All I gotta do is turn back and now I'm zeroed for the subsonic. Then I switch to the federal or the mini mag and I simply turn it back to 11. I'm gonna get a little piece of paper and I'm gonna put it in this compartment here that tells me how many clicks for each ammo. Same thing with windage and then we're good to go. That is why I like this. And then when you're zeroing it in, you can pull this up and that's how I got the zero for the subsonic.
So here's at 100 yards. Use that bullet drop, and it was between the second and the third circle with the zero. Good group. Here, I actually doped the scope from up here and went five up and I think three left and was getting a good group. And that's just the Federal 36 grain hollow point range ammo. Let's give this a try at 100 yards with the spinners. So anyway, all done with a review here on the Ruger 1022 Precision Rifle. I love this gun. You know, it's not perfect. I wouldn't give it a full five stars, two thumbs up, but I'd give it close. You know, there's just a couple of things that, you know, I would, I would do different. Um, overall, though, if I were to get a Bolt Action 22 for the money, I think this is what I would get. You know, it's going to be, you're going to be hard pressed to get something better for less. You're going to be really hard pressed. I love using subsonic in this. It is just crazy, stupid, quiet. If you haven't visited our webpage, I have everything on here, all the links. You can find this stuff, some killer deals on Amazon, on my Amazon, Amazon store for the scope and the mounts. I got a review on the 22 target spinner that I put together. Love that. You know, had it at 50, stuck it out to 100. If you liked, be sure to like, sub, comment. Until next time, happy shooting and be safe.